So uh, a couple of things that I want to talk about, especially today, because I, uh, I mentioned something Sunday that I know uh, may have jarred people a little bit. Um, when I talked about how every promise of the Bible is in mine, you know, that, that the ditty that many of us that were in Sunday school learned, um, you know, every verse, every, uh, every line. It, and I know that some people were like, whoa, wait a minute, then how do I know what's true? How do I know what's for me? How do I know what's not, what's not for me? So I wanna want to spend a couple of moments, maybe not necessarily clarifying, but talking about that a little bit. I mentioned the passage in Jeremiah, which I'm not looking at this morning, where God promised that he had a purpose and a hope. And it wasn't spoke, spoken to us. But what we have to go with is we have to go with the principles that are behind it. So I can take that and say, okay, there is a, a principle that God has a purpose for me that I see illustrated throughout the Bible, throughout the New Testament, uh, that God has a purpose in my life and in yours. So I can take that verse and I can apply it to me. But I can't, um, I can't, I can't take that verse and say that verse was for me. But I can apply the truth to me. So I think it's important that we that we clarify that. It's important as we looked at on Sunday to understand not only what we're reading, but to also but to know the meaning of what we're reading. We can't just make up the meaning. We have to understand things in their historical context. It's for instance like Shakespeare. Uh, you can't understand Shakespeare that well unless you go back and you understand the historical context in which Shakespeare was written. Um, we don't understand wars unless we understand the historical context of them. We don't understand speeches, uh, which I love to study old speeches, unless we understand the context of those. So context is really everything, history, uh, culture, language, uh, syntactical uh, context, all of those things are really important. But the idea is, is that we pull the principles out. So even with stories, for example, with the story of Nehemiah, we're able to pull the, pull the, the principles of the stories out of leadership from Nehemiah and be able to, um, to apply those truths to our lives. So I think it's important to understand that, that every part of the Bible is true Every part is inspired by God, but not every part of it is always applicable. When you look at some of the, the strict laws that, that were applicable only to Israel because God was building a nation with them, and that was why there was all this go in and wipe out this one and do that and tear down these idols and, and, and all of that. But there's some contextualization of principles that we can learn in these things and that we have to remember and we have to, we have to think about. Now, uh, that leads me to a further discussion that I think is even more um, important. Um, there was a, a Facebook thing that was going back and forth yesterday, and someone on a friend of mine's personal page made a comment about religion, um, uh, that religious people were, and I'm, I, and I'm probably taking a little bit of liberty, um, weren't as educated kind of like, you know, Bible, religion, all these things are a myth. And so I, I couldn't resist. I was like, oh my gosh, good morning, Bill. I was like, so I, 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 I put a comment and it was, it was snarky, it was sarcastic. And it was meant to be funny because I don't pay any attention to folks like that. But it was like, oh, I said, oh my gosh. I said, I said, man, thank you for telling me that everything I've studied and, and been looking at over the past, uh, you know, 30 years as a pastor is a lie. All the, all the stuff that I've given to people at funerals has all been superstition and none of it is true. And so, thank you. I'm going to immediately resign my position at the church and go be a greeter at Walmart. And, um, and it was like, and the person was like, well, wait, wait, are you, are you a pastor? Are you, are you serious? I said, relax. It's just a joke. I don't, you know, and it, it's always funny to me because people like to do that with the Bible. They will, they will say, oh, the Bible is a, is a, is a book of stories. Oh, all right. I'm going to go with that for a minute. Let's assume that the Bible is story. In fact, a lot of a lot of it is true story. I believe we know when they're not. We know when they're parables. A good Samaritan was a parable. Um, Prodigal son was a parable. It was a story that Jesus used to teach a principle. It's important to hang on to that. Uh, 
We believe at Community Bible Church that what's called the verbal plenary inspiration of the scriptures is it extends to the original autographs. Doesn't that sound impressive? It simply means that we believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God in the original manuscripts. That means the Hebrew, the Greek, the, the translations are, are uh, we have uh, translations of the inspired version of God. But so in other words, we have, the point is we have the truth in our language. So let's say for a moment, um, in fact, let me give you a better example. Um, Adam and Eve. There are some who believe that the story of Adam and Eve is meant to be allegorical and was not historical. So let's talk about that for a moment. Let's assume that I have an individual who says to me, well, the Bible is allegory and it's not true, so why do you build your life on that? Okay. Because here's the point. Truth is truth. So, for example, what do we learn in the story of Adam and Eve? Now, I believe it's a true story. I believe Adam and Eve existed. They were our first parents. I, I, I believe that. But let's say that it was allegorical. What is the principle... What are the principles that are taught? Well, real simple. It's the story of these people that are put in paradise and are told, you can have everything in here you want, but this one thing, this this the fruit from this one tree, uh, which was referred to as a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat of it because you will die. You'll be separated. You'll experience it. You have, a, you have the chance to live in paradise or you have the choice to be separated from paradise. The choice is yours. So what did they do? Satan, the snake, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, if you call it an allegory, okay, came to Eve and said, "Has God really said you can't eat every tree in the garden?" So what did he do? He maximized the restriction, and then he says, "You're not surely going to die." He minimized the consequences. God only knows that when you do this, that you eat of it, you'll be like him. So he relabeled the action. So did you got that? Maximize the restriction, minimize the consequences, relabel the action. And then he mixed good with evil. Now, all of those principles are at work in our life all the time. For example, when we're told wet paint, what do we do as human beings? What do we do as human beings? When we are, uh, I just got an alarm call, it looks like from, I don't know. I guess they'll, there's staff there, so they must have set the alarm off. I'm, I'm serious. I don't usually look at my phone, but my watch came up and has a security company on it. So anyway, um, so if you look at the principles, and, and when we're told don't, you know, wet paint, what do we want to do? I, I don't know about you, but I want to go touch it to see if it's still wet. Don't walk on the grass. Mm, I'm going to cut across the grass. We always focus on the restriction and not the blessing around us. Got it? So somebody that wants to argue with the truth of that, the truth of the principle behind it is we as human beings maximize the restriction. We look at the one thing we can't do rather than all the things that we can do. If you're on a diet and you think, man, pizza's the problem. I can't eat pizza, I can't eat pizza. I can't. We focus on what we can't. Meanwhile, we can have all of these other healthy options, all these other things that we can do. We can even have, have pizza occasionally, but we focus on what we can't have. We do it all the time. Minimizing consequences. No, you're not gonna, that's not really gonna happen if you do this. Go ahead and when we minimize taking that next drink or we minimize taking that next step in a relationship or we minimize doing those things, what happens? So the, 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 the thing that I, that I want us to realize is, is that truth is truth. And so someone can try to argue and talk about how, uh, how these things are, uh, this is superstition, the Bible's not real, but they're every, every story from the Bible, whether it be allegorical, whether it be true, uh, whether there is current history that we can see to back it up archaeologically or not, the principles work. Let's look at the Ten Commandments. You, you, there's only one God. You're not Him. Uh, you've got to worship God. When you bring other gods in your life besides the God that's important and you elevate them beyond Him, then you have a problem. What about what about the not honoring your parents? 
What about remembering the Sabbath day? You say, well, that's that's a little tight. No, no, Sabbath day was, remember what Jesus said, was that, that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So God wanted us to take a pause. Throughout the scriptures, you see Jesus taking a pause. In the Old Testament, in between the, the lines in the Psalms, you would see Selah, which was a pause, that God wants us to take a pause. There's a natural pause that should occur and that we are constantly connected and constantly going and never pausing. It, it, it's detrimental to our health. So you had the first four or five commandments that were my relationship with God, but the others were my relationship with everybody else. Principle works. Don't commit adultery. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't, don't covet. Don't envy. Envy is a big, huge problem today with social media. Look, I love social media. We use it for good. But there has been studies that are out there linked to the depression that occurs for people because they will see what somebody else looks like they have on Facebook. Looks like they're, you know, they're going all these different places. Uh, you know, it shows them in, uh, it shows them in, you know, in in these remote locations. Looks like they're never working. Looks like they have the ideal life, or they look like they have the ideal relationship because you see them and their spouse and everybody's always happy and together and smiling. And meanwhile, that certainly may not be accurate at all. It may not be accurate. Period. But the bottom line is, is that we have to understand that that these these principles are there. They're important. They 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 work. The stories work. And so this is where we have to understand that uh, the truth is the truth, no matter what. And and so uh, people can argue and fuss and fight about about the veracity of the scriptures, the veracity of religion. And all of those things, and uh, and so it, it's one of those things that we have to understand that there are people that are going to criticize it. But often, like I said Sunday, I quoted Zig Ziglar that that the uh, that it's not the parts of the Bible that people underst don't understand that bother them; it's the parts that they do. And so, uh, understanding that we have that, and knowing that people are going to have uh, questions or they're going to have comments. And sometimes we take it so personal that, oh my gosh, I don't believe the Bible. Okay, well that, that's fine, but go back and read some of the stories there and then tell me about how important the principles are of those stories. For years, people uh, and, and nations and groups and families and tribes, they would use stories of their ancestors to teach truth. And that's what I think we have to remember, we have to realize, we have to we have to know that that's, that's what often happened. And so consequently, you see that happening in the scriptures all of the time. The stories, when you, when you teach the story of the prodigal son, when you teach the story of, 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 uh, of the good Samaritan, those teach principles of who is my neighbor, of, of that, that, that God rejoices in the, in the wayward uh, child that returns to him. And, and so those are, those are things that I think that we have to recognize are so vitally important to us. So when somebody says to you, well, the Bible's not true, I would say, look, go back and read the stories. And let's assume that what you're saying is, is that you don't think it's the quote unquote word of God. Just go back and then tell me, though, do you think it's true? Do you think the principles work? And you'll find that they do. And that's why uh, I've spent my life doing this and why when people take shots at it I'm like whatever you know if you want to say you're a, an atheist or you're an agnostic by the way I welcome those folks in our church as long as they're an honest atheist or agnostic that's actually looking for the truth um, an early mentor of mine Steve Brown used to have a meeting uh, once a month for atheists and it was a discussion it would just be Steve, and it would be the atheist. He wouldn't allow anybody else in his church to come. They had to be an atheist to be there. Nobody else could come. It was just him because he didn't want other people saying, you know, uh, stupid stuff. Well, I know God is real because I can feel Him down in my heart. Where you know, again, same thing we talked about Sunday. That see, I, I believe that there is evidence of God that I can, without going back to the scriptures, because somebody doesn't believe the Bible, and then I try to prove God from the Bible. They already don't believe the Bible, so why would I try to prove God from that? And so 
uh, sometimes Christians will do that or they say, well, I have a relationship with him. Okay, but are you sure that's not a feeling? How do you know for sure? And so, uh, so Steve used to do that and he, man, he had so many people that wound up coming around uh, to the Lord and finding that path just because of that discussion. So I'm, you know, I'm not against it, uh, but when somebody's using it just to criticize or condemn, I'm like, yeah, whatever, enjoy your life. Um, we've got more important things uh, to be concerned about. And we, you know, we are supposed to be about kingdom business and that's exactly what we're going to do. So uh, anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on that.